Okay, binomial expansion is for GCSE stats. Okay, this is an A-level topic, so if you Google this, you probably will get an A-level topic, but it's a lot harder. I've also done another video which explains about where all these numbers come from, but this is just so you can answer GCSE stats. Okay, now these questions tend to be presented like this. This all looks a bit weird, but essentially what this means is this, it means it can be modelled using the binomial theorem. Okay, uh, the first number is the of trials, and the second one is the probability of a successful trial. So for example, this one here would be if I wanted to flip a coin, and I want a heads of successful trial, this is saying that I'm going to flip a coin three times. Okay. A 10 sided die is rolled three times. I want a multiple of three. What's the probability I get one multiple of three, two multiples of three, three multiples of three? And it will always give you the binomial expansion. Yeah? In this case, it's p plus q all the cubed equals q cubed plus three q squared p plus three p. So q p squared plus p cubed. And it looks a little bit complicated. Okay, but each part of those of that terms actually really helps you out in your question. Now, if we model Q as success, and I know it's 3 out of 10, because I know multiples of 3 must have to be 3, 6, or 9, and there's 10 of them, I know probably a fail must be 0.7, because that's equal to 1. Now, if you think back to your tree diagram, to get three successes, I'd have to do 0 0.3 times 0 0.3 times 0 0.3, or 0 0.3 cubed, which is actually is my first term there. So my first term is the same as three successful events. My second term is two successful. My third term is one successful. My last term is no successful events. And it's really nice because it sort of gives us like a formula to work these out without drawing a big massive tree diagram. So I'm going to do the last one. If I get three, if I get three multiples of three. Okay, so it's my first one success, my second one success, my third one success. It's my first term, which is 0 0.2 cubed, as I just said, 0 0.027. Now, two multiples of three is going to be my second term, and all we got to do is just substitute the values in. So I know that Q is 0 0.3, and uh, P is 0 0.7, so I do 3 times 0 0.3 squared times 0 0.7, which is 0 0.189. Okay. My next one, to get one multiple of three, that's my third term, and again, I'll just substitute the values in. So it's 3 times 0 0.3, because that's successful, and 0 0.7 squared, because that's unsuccessful, is 0 0.441. Now, it's not on there, but if I actually want to get no successful trials of 3, it'll be my last term, which is 0 0.7 cubed. Okay. And here's your tree diagram. Now, I find this tree diagram, even though I can do it, I find it a lot more complicated than using my binomial theorem. But it'll still work, and you may still get marks in your questions. Okay, a drug cures 3 out of four, 7 people. It's given to 4 people. Work out the probability that nobody's cured, one person is cured, two people are cured, and everyone is cured. Okay, and it gives you the binomial expansion. Um, if you look top left, it's how you model it. We're modeling it on a binomial, doing it four times, chance of successful trial is three out of seven. Um, I'll give you a bit of time if you can work it out. Okay, so uh, the chances of it happening is three out of seven. So my logic chance of it not happening is four out of seven, so it's gonna be seven out of seven. Now, everyone is cured is gonna be my last trial, because I need four successful trials, which can be three, seven to power four. So you can work backwards, you know, then three people cured, two people cured, one person is cured, and nobody's cured. Okay, so the first one is nobody's cured. That's Q to the power of 4, which is 4 7 to the power of 4, which is 0 0.017. Next one, I'm just substituting the values in. Uh, so one person is cured, so it's going to be 4 times uh, 4 7 cubed uh, times 3 7 to the power of 1, which I've got 0 0.302. I'm doing 6 for two people cured, I'm doing 6 times 4 7 squared times 3 7 squared, which I've got 0 0.360. Then I've got three people cured, 4 times 4 7 times 3 7 cubed, which is 0 0.108. And last one, I've just got 3 7 to the power of 4, which makes sense. Now, if you want to check your work, uh, if you add up all your decimals, you should be getting one. And uh, I do get one. I've got a little bit of a rounding error, but that's fine. That's perfect. Right. If you want to try it for yourself, you've got some questions here. Um, when you've done these questions, I expect you to do a textbook, but some of you might have forgotten your textbook. Pause video. Here's your answers. Uh, that's your right, by the way, for the last question. And here's your answers to the last one. Hope you enjoyed that.